Namaskar, hello and welcome viewers. You're watching the special presentation of Sunset TV, Bills and Acts, where we analyze the bills that impact you, acts that empower you and programs that matter to you. I'm your host Kruti Mishra and today the spotlight is on a bill that paves way for Gati Shakti Vishwavidyalaya. Before the detailed analysis, let's take a look at the highlights. Parliament passed the Central University's Amendment Bill 2022 for conversion of the National Rail and Transportation Institute into Gati Shakti Vishwavidyalaya. The bill amends the Central Universities Act 2009, which provides for establishing central universities in various states. The Vishwavidyalaya will be sponsored and funded by the central government through the Ministry of Railways. PM Gati Shakti, National Master Plan for Multimodal Connectivity is essentially a digital platform to bring 16 ministries including railways and roadways together for integrated planning and coordinated implementation of infrastructure connectivity projects. Traditionally, there was lack of coordination between different departments. For example, once a road was constructed, other agencies dug up the constructed road again for activities like laying of underground cables, gas pipelines, etc. This not only caused great inconvenience but was also a wasteful expenditure. To address this, efforts were made to increase coordination so that all cables and pipelines could be laid simultaneously. In the last few years, the government has ensured unprecedented focus on infrastructure through a holistic outlook. Instead of planning and designing separately in silos, the projects will be designed and executed with a common vision. And to analyze the impact of this amendment, I'm joined by an illustrious panel of guests. Joining us in the studio, Mr. Ashok Mittal. He's Rajya Sabha member from the Upper House. Also joining us, Mr. Sudhendu Jyoti Sinha, advisor, Transport and Infrastructure Connectivity, Niti Ayok. Also in the studio, we have with us Sachin JKS Haritash, member of FIKI National Logistics Committee. He's also the director of Cheta Group. Also in the studio, we have with us young and vibrant audience. I welcome all of you on Sunset TV and thank you so much for joining us. And Mr. Mittal, let me begin the program with you. You were the lead speaker from your party when this bill was passed in the upper house. Take us through the highlights of the bill and also the importance of the bill. Mm, Jaihin. Uh, thank you very much, Sunset TV and ma'am, to invite me here to discuss about the bills further. Uh, this bill, as told by ma'am, was there to change a college into a university. That was really a very good step by the government of India. And on the floor of the house, I applauded that. And same, uh, I am applauding it here. Very well done, government of India. This bill is a central law and going to make a college into a university. And the central government is committed to provide the funding for that also. This is another good step. That bill was having five provisions total because it, is an, it was an amendment bill. Three procedural and two was uh, which are relevant. Out of that, there was one provision which was looking something not very conducive to the employees of the college who are working right now in that college, okay, if they want to leave, the provisions were saying, okay, we'll give you three months uh, salary and we'll say, you, okay, if you want to go, you can go. Something like that. So I requested minister and uh, he clarified uh, on the floor of the house and I hope he will take care of uh, any genuine issues of the staff member of that college. Another part of bill, section 5, which was primarily was progressive in nature and was telling that the central government or the Vishwavidyalaya has the power to make more such centers across the country, which was a welcome step. And I hope this Vishwavidyalaya or this university will grow further leaps and bounds. Uh, but when we say about education or when we say about university, so many questions come to our mind. And especially in a country like India. I will try to touch a few points. Number one, we are a poor country. Our GRP is yet to be improved, though the government is working very hard and it is improving every year, but we are not able to meet our targets. But what do we do? 
we open one university one college then we open one more university one college in other state then we open third fourth fifth sixth we continue to open more and more colleges and more or more universities by the government funds i told at the parliament and the same here why don't we utilize the existing resources mm -hmm. for example i gave one example of iits at that time IITs are wonderful institutions. They have wonderful infrastructure facilities. But we open more IITs. Why don't we increase the seats in the existing IITs? Because that will be more cost effective. But we take this in on the basis of political consideration. If we do it with the political consideration and take this on the basis of merit, we can utilize our resources in a better way. other point if there is an iit teaching engineering education why can't we open a medical college inside the iit buildings or premises we will use so many common resources so many hostels auditoriums sports complex vc offices administrative blocks so many common resources we can use and save huge huge costs but here i am happy to share Three days back, I was reading a news that the government of India is going ahead with this proposal, and they are allowing medical education in some of the IITs to start with. I think that's a welcome step by the government of India, and I hope they will continue to do this kind of things in future too. In India, we have colleges, we have universities in higher education, and when we say universities, some are teaching universities, some are research universities too. But do they get sufficient research funds? why why don't they get because as per the present system there are government laboratories which are funded by the government of india there are hundreds of the government laboratories under different ministries industry sets up its own lab to do in innovations to do research every good industry has its own lab then the universities are left with their meager funds mm -hmm. and when we see us uk and other european countries and developed countries all of their resources of almost all of their resources of research goes to universities right then advantage university have students who work upon those projects the cost is reduced they learn students also learn and they become good professional when they join industry or business or research another issue education ministry there is a separate skill development ministry Mm -hmm. there is a separate sports ministry there is a separate ministry for certain entrepreneurship there is another ministry there are so many ministries to handle right there are so many regulatory bodies to handle by an institution or by a university their major resource goes waste in coordinating with all those ministries and all those regulatory bodies we further suffer I think that's a very valid suggestion that across the ministries we have this coordinated approach. But getting back to Gati Shakti, uh, Mr. Sinha, of course we've been talking about the 21st century, the challenges of 21st century. We're talking about the fourth industrial revolution. Given the fact we'll have Gati Shakti Vishwavidyalay now, how do we ensure that our workforce is future ready? You know, let's put it this way: that what does all of us want? We want India to be world's best. How do we become world's best? if we are able to raise productivity if we are able to accelerate our economic development and growth how these two can be achieved they can be achieved if our infrastructure is globally best and if there is a logistic synergy so two two things are there one is infrastructure and then second part is the logistic synergy reducing the cost of logistics in the field of infrastructure you saw that the government has taken set of initiatives from the beginning itself so what they did was first they focused on the entire all these infrastructure parts into one and they created national infrastructure pipeline so 111 lakh crore rupees national infrastructure pipeline where almost 17 economic and five social infrastructure they have been combined together and then more granular initiatives were initiated by government such as you know bharat mala for roads mm -hmm. sagar mala for port shipping inland waterways then there is parvat mala for the hilly regions that is another achievement 
another initiative that has been there. So a set of initiatives started coming in. Then that was followed by last year on 15th of August, Prime Minister announced PM Gati Shakti. The idea was that why are our, are our infrastructure projects delayed? So to ensure that the infrastructure projects are timely completed without cost overruns, it is needed that PM Gati Shakti was, this idea was floated. Yes. The principal thing is that it should be a whole of government approach. It should not be a department's approach. So if a road is being laid, you should not be saying that it is Moth's project. No, it is government of India's project. If a railway line is being laid down, that is government of India's project. Then every ministry, uh, our Honorable MP mentioned about so many ministries, you see. So all ministries, they will combine together as a team because now everybody's responsibility is there. So precisely, you mentioned in the beginning also, that to have that, to achieve that holistic approach, this Gati Shakti came in. Now, Gati Shakti is precisely what? It is a kind of framework on which you can, you can take an infrastructure from in, to its, in, in its entire life cycle. So from the design stage, from preparing the DPR, preparing the, actually implementing it, then kind of changing if need be, then kind of uh, all the evaluation and monitoring, the entire life style can be, the entire life cycle of the infrastructure can be taken on this particular framework. But we need to know how exactly it has to be done. Exactly. How exactly that has to be developed. And that is why this Gati Shakti Vishwavidyalaya has come in. The idea is that we must have professionally competent, you know, young people in the transportation sector. Right. Then only we should be able, we would be able to drive this infrastructure forward. And as I told you in the beginning, that without the government's view is very clear. We want an absolutely focused, world-class, globally best infrastructure. And with Gati Shakti, PM Gati Shakti, this is going to be a coordinated whole of government approach, not working in silos, but a holistic approach so that with same resource, we are able to achieve the best. Absolutely. And with Gati Shakti, and with this Gati Shakti Vishwavidyalaya, the capability, the people will be trained, young professionals will be there, they will realize what is the importance of infrastructure connectivity. So precisely that is how it is being right, taken. Right, absolutely. So of course, we're talking about Gati Shakti and Gati Shakti Vishwavidyalaya and the students would be absorbed in the industry. Let's get an industry perspective there. Sachin ji, you're already smiling at that. I know yeah. you went to the university, you interacted with the students, you yes. also gave a lecture there. Two things that the industry always use. One, that we do not have trained manpower. Mm. And the second thing, of course, logistics costs that uh, we're looking at. We are trying to aim to cut it down to 8% of uh, the GDP, the logistics cost. The fact that we have a Gati Shakti Vishwavidyalaya now. Help me understand the industry's perspective and, of course, uh, uh, your experience of trade interacting with the students there. And the 16 ministries are working to bring this as a success, uh, Gati Shakti. And I would like to thanks to our Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi ji, taking this initiative and bringing so many ministries, joining them together and to work for the one government. And we can see that even in the organization, it's very tough to bring so many departments with a one vision. And uh, that's what we have seen in multiple levels, that government, the way they have worked, they have brought the policies and that has helped the uh, industry and uh, new entrepreneurs to work and to grow the economy. So as you have said that uh, as a professional manpower, uh, India being from last uh, six to eight years since the e-commerce has dropped in in the India, that has pushed a lot to the logistic sector. Yes. And as from the industry, we as Chetak Group, uh, our father, Mr. J.K. Sharma, has started multimodal transportation way back in 1982. So we were using the railways, we were using the roads, warehousing, last mile. And I can correlate that what kind of challenge he might have faced at that point of time in bringing the documentation, flow of material. Physical flow of material we were doing, but the information flow was not there. By bringing these eight, 16 ministries, so many departments, the flow of information, which is the key right now to take right decisions. That's what start, we started getting. The data, the APIs, which we can have the access from the government. 
is reasonably transparent and a quickest way of information by that we can do the statistical analysis and again we can take decisions as gati shakti uh, university in badodra uh, so i was physically over there with the, our director mr arun arora so he had a lecture over there on the communication skills and there i also interacted with the students and it was very pleasant that they can correlate all modes of transport rather than only the railways previously it was used to be national railway and transport institute but now it's gati shakti university right so they can understand that what industry require and mm -hmm. we as an industry in last during covid i will say that covid becomes a blessing in disguise for the logistic sector now are almost all the documentation in the road transport is being done through online so we don't have to go physically that is a very big change similarly in the warehousing warehousing development authority has brought so many improvements made so many regulation which are very smooth paperless right again we have doing the rail transportation and now we will be applying for a license uh, for the rail operator and in that we uh, thought that we'll go to the ministry we'll approach and we ask for the interview and you can't imagine that the director level person is started doing the follow up from us that when you are coming okay. so that kind of a response is coming so we also get enthusiastic to approach to the government and we are seeing the ways the government is opening up previously it was not there the railway freight has increased the kind of ecosystem we got during the covid from the railway ministry uh, to send goods through train which was never being seen uh, labor problems at the railway station when you go as a passenger we go as to book the material we don't face now right so all these things coming together i am very much sure that the government initiative to reduce the cost which will make our products cheaper at low cost right. make us more competitive we can increase our uh, forex reserves by exporting and the most important is the ports ports at ports there are so many documentation to fill one consignment we need almost 40 to 50 documents to for the export consignment and there are repetitions of same fields right. but with the apis uh, the government is made digitalized all the uh, different uh, agencies and brought all the data at the same common portal over there we can now track the uh, containers we can get to know that how many containers are at which destination so that i can reach out. so it's the information right now in india there was a report of mr g raghuram he is the principal advisor of gati shakti university so in his report there was 8% to 9% is the transportation cost and rest cost is the inventory cost exactly the, right the time which we spend at the highways on the road on the toll on the ports that time if we'll reduce then are we become more competitive and absolutely the focus of course is on being competitive in the global arcade and also ensuring ease of doing business on that note let's take some questions from our audience please go ahead introduce yourself and speak your mind is the government seeing transport as the big industry of the future for startup our prime minister modi ji is also very keen that every student must think of startup when he is in the college and he himself interacts with the students so this sector will also be part of it and definitely it is for you people to take initiative to move ahead in this direction how effective uh, this act will be in long term mr sena it would be absolutely effective it is very very ambitious act you see because once you have core group of professionally competent experts in transport once it gives to young students a new career options one once it is able to connect between the private sector public sector and the academy once the focus is that on the research and planning you see then the kind of infrastructure connectivity that we want we to be as i told you it has to be globally best then only we will be able to achieve that so precisely this is going to create a massive you know buzz uh, uh, and that is what the aspiration from this particular university is that it will have professionally as i told you competent people for example today in transport sector women are very less in number 
Yes. Then how do you think of having a gender sensitive infrastructure connectivity? Very true. If women are not there. So once we give a kind of career options to them, once they are reach out into transport sector, then probably that would be the time when it would start, it would take a snowball into a very, very positive way. It's an absolutely top class initiative that, that is, and a, and a wonderful gift to all the students to take to transportation as a career. Absolutely. Let's take another question. Another ministry is uh, also going to open same kind of university like finance ministry or maybe or some another ministry, broadcasting ministry can open same kind of I university. think the advisor to Niti Ayog would be the best person to answer this. So I would put it this way that as far as transportation is concerned, <coughs> in, this, in this particular university only, all the transport, co-transport uh, ministries, they would be taking initiative, they would be creating their, their uh, in this particular university, it would be logged in. So ministry of uh, other than railways, of course, roads are there, then civil aviation is there and uh, port shipping inland waterways, logistics, the, all of them will be focusing on this particular university. Is one Gati Shakti Vishwavidalia sufficient for whole India? And the second is how we are going to select students for the same because uh, students from all over the India would like to take admission. Sachin so Ji, what would be the criteria? You're going to be the employer. Now tell us. So I think it's a, one of the initiative of the government and on the success of it, there would be, I believe that Ms. Parliament, uh, Member Parliament is here, so he will be taking a call that to propose to the government to open such more universities in coming time. And uh, definitely uh, this university will empower the women also as what sir has said, that uh, women should come forward and I have seen that in last 10 years, Previously, there was hardly any women. Now, there are almost 4 to 5 percent women are joining the transport sector, which is a very big change. And they are doing marketing activities also rather than only the office work. So, they are into operations, they are into marketing. So, I believe that uh, this will give a push to the students to opt for these courses. And uh, we'll see the change in coming time. Anybody from the country can take admissions. Of course, provided he should fulfill eligibility and uh, other norms. Nobody is denied, I think. Uh, that's a very norm. And uh, having CUET entrance for yes. all the central yes. universities. Exactly. So, you have so to is meet there the eligibility for this kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. Yes. There is no issue on that front. You need not bother about that. The government has very Just study hard. Yes. She's already doctored. <laughs> yes. Uh, I need not tell her. Uh, second, about the opening more institutions. Incidentally, in this very act, Section 5, I told also, uh, provides for opening more centers or institutions across India. Whenever government wants or university wants, they can open more centers across India. I can add on to what Sir said. You know, Please, in the next ahead. five years, our expectation from the university is that at least 5,000 professional students, in 5,000 executives, 50,000 already those who are working into the industry, and 50,000 youth they would be skilled from this. So that is what the aspiration is. That is what the expectation is. Once there is a requirement, we can, uh, sir rightly said, we can go in for additional months, yes. Hello, ma'am. Hello, sir. I have a question. What was the condition before this, make this all bill pass? Earlier, what used to happen was that the approach was that transport was never taken as a, as a big career, you see. Transport was not taken as a big subject also. It was always a part somewhere. So in geography, there is a part of transport. In school of planning and architecture, there is a part of transport. There was a marine university, yes. So it was not a focused approach was not there. Now, once the government has taken a call that we are going into the globally best infrastructure with all the focus, naturally the, it came that we should have capability also to do it. How right. to develop that capability? Then this, the answer to, uh, is uh, to your question, that then the creation of this Vishwavidyale, where there should be complete focus on transportation, all the core sectors of transport, roadways, railways, civil aviation, shipping, logistics, waterways, all seven of them. So that is how they focus. On that note, thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Mittal, Mr. Sinha and Mr. Haritash. Well, viewers, that's all we have for you in this edition. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Sunset TV. Namaskar.